وتحفز النفس الكريمة تبتغي الجنات بحلول شهر الصوم والرحمات والرضوان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Continuing with the 20th juz of the quran Kareem as part of our discussion for this month of Ramadan, the, the, um, the juz begins with the concluding pages of uh, Surah Naml and heads into Surah Al-Qasas. Surah Al-Qasas has to do with a, with a discussion of the lives of the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam, of the previous generations, in particular Musa alayhi salatu was salam's story, and then to, in particular, his early days, uh, open for discussion or under discussion in the beginning pages of uh, Surah Al-Qasas. In there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of the birth of Musa alayhi salatu was salam and the subsequent fear surrounding his birth that his mother had. The anxiety because, as we know very well, that Pharaoh, Fir'aun, the tyrant, uh, part of his decree that when he had seen a dream that a child of the Bani Israel had now grown up and taken his kingdom, he had passed a blanket open law that all male infants of the Bani Israel must be killed. However, in years to come, it was amended to a point that only in every second year that they would be killed. Musa salam's brother Harun was born in the year that they were not being killed. But the following year, Musa salam was born. And as much as she could, the mother of Musa salam hid the infant. But there came a time that because of the pressures of society and the intensity of the, uh, you know, of the police system in the, in the tyrannical uh, government of Fir'aun, there came a time wherein she genuinely feared for the safety of her child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals that how he ordered the protection of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim wa awhayna ila ummi Musa that we reveal to the mother of Musa an ardi'ihi that you suckle him. And when you fear, then what you do is that you cast him into the river. You cast him into the ocean. Yam is a huge quantity of water. Could be a large river or an ocean or a pond, you cast him into the uh, the water. Wala takhafi and you do not fear and you do not grieve. Inna raduhu ilayk that we will return him to you and we will make him minal mursaleen, we will make him from the messengers. What we understand here that in this ayah, the lesson that was given or is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the ummah at large, although the uh, recipient of of the direct message is the mother of Musa alayhi salat was salam. The ummah is informed that if you stand up on the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although in your mind it may be seemingly hopeless, the logistics and the logical explanation of what is to be done, standing up on the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may not make immediate sense to you for whatever reason. But your yaqeen and your faith should propel you to understand that the outcome will be a positive one. Hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the mother of Musa alayhi salam. And by the way, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Awhayna, it should be noted that this is not the wahi that was revealed unto the Anbiya alayhi salat was salam, but it can be translated as a personal inspiration or that a directive was given to the mother of Musa alayhi salat was salam by the way of a positive thought placed inside her heart that this is what she must do. And this type of instruction is not uh, exclusive to the mother of Musa alayhi salat was salam, but any believer, any person for that matter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may direct them upon what is best in their affairs through the medium of this divine inspiration, which obviously does not qualify as the wahi and the revelation that came down upon the Anbiya alayhi salat was salam, the doors of that being closed with the uh, passing of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wala nabiya ba'da, and there is no Nabi after him. Nonetheless, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that although you will fear, fa'idha khifti, it is a foregone conclusion that you are going to fear putting your child in that box in the ocean when you now put him in that body of, of water, of course the river headed towards the ocean, that's how the Nile flows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells her, 
wala takhafi do not fear and do not be grieved which are the two qualities which may overcome a person standing up upon the hukam and the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there may be a sense of fear that what's going to happen to me what's going to happen to my loved ones and there may be a sense of grief also that the outcome may be such that I may lose position I may lose money I may lose a family member all these types of thoughts are legitimate human thoughts and yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledges it but consoles her at the same time. We know very well that khawf and huzn is going to be part of your, of, your, of your feelings and emotions at that point in time. But you do not worry. Accept the consolation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his following promise that we are going to return him to you and not only return him to you, the rank that we are going to make him min al mursaleen from the anbiya, from the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which represent the highest rank that any human being could possibly occupy. There is no higher rank amongst a grouping than the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Still, the early days of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, his growing up continue until they come, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings it to a point in Surah Al-Qasas, wherein Musa alayhi salatu wasalam now in the marketplace of Egypt separates two people who are quarreling one from his people the Bani Israel and the other one from the people of Pharaoh he, when he separates them he separates them with such force that at one particular person and that is the person who is of the uh, people of Fir'aun he topples over and he now dies in the skirmish or the melee that now pursues Musa alayhi salatu wasalam urges this person here who saw it to keep quiet noting that this year was a mistake and justice will not be meted out to me because Fir'aun is still after my blood even though I grew up in his in his palace he still thinks that I am that sole youngster of the Bani Israel that's now going to take his kingdom which of course was true at the end of the day but Fir'aun had this let's call it a premonition that this is exactly going to happen hence looking for an excuse to put Musa alayhi salatu wasalam away permanently anyway the story now continues where uh in the following day, the news and information of what occurred through the blurting out of that individual who was supposedly saved by Musa alayhi salam, it goes out into the marketplace and now the news becomes popular that Musa alayhi salam is the one responsible for the other day's murder, the police after him. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam has to flee and he flees to the land of Madian, which is assumed to be today in southern Palestine, southern Jordan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best regarding the historical location of this place. But it seems by way of a geographical description and the fact that historically it is assumed that Shu'aib alayhi salatu wasalam is buried in that area. It is to, today in the area of the southern Jordan Peninsula uh, towards the west of the Jordan River Valley. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Nonetheless, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam comes there and the interaction takes place between him and two girls who turned out to be the daughters of Shu'aib alayhi salatu wasalam, he assists them. He sees that they are struggling to get to the front of the line to give water to their flock of sheep. They are unable to assist themselves and they explain themselves in, in another place by stating and saying that our father is unable to tend to the flock anymore because of his age. And as you can see that these shepherds over here, they are taking advantage of us that because we are, you know, we are girls. So they push their, their flock to the front of the line and they cut into the line even even though it is our deserving turn. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam cannot allow it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that um, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam takes control of the situation and nobody interferes with Musa alayhi salam. And he takes the flock to the front of the line where they belong, gives them water. They come back home earlier than normal. The father Shu'aib alayhi salatu wasalam asked them and then the story continues from there. The point that I wish to highlight is that when Musa alayhi salatu wasalam had concluded his deed, he now gave water to the flock. Thumma tawalla ila dhil. 
Then he turned towards the shade of a tree. فَقَالَ رَبِّي إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ What does he do? He only turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying that, O oh Allah, whatever you can send down from good, I am a faqir, I am a beggar, I am at the end of my tether, I am a traveler, I've got nothing to lean on, no family, no support in this land that I'm a stranger. Whatever you send down, my trust is upon you. There's a subtle important lesson here for the reader of the Quran, for the believer, in the sense that if you do anything good and serve humanity or an individual or a community or even a single person for that matter, it should not be that you expect anything from them. Otherwise, you may compromise your ajr and your reward in the law by way of having a mixed niyat and intention. But rather, if your intention was solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you go back to your work and you disappear from the life of those people in the sense that you do not demand any form of reciprocation you know, from them for doing them a, you know, a, a good deed. This is the highest quality of a believer. It may not always be impermissible to do so. It's allowed that a person has some expectations of kindness to be reciprocated. But the highest level of a person instituting and putting forth any good deed of service is that they should not expect or demand any reciprocation from the people of the world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sure to respond with better than what they could have ever hoped for. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to the dua of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Shu'aib alayhi salam is the Nabi of Allah, sends one of the daughters back. He comes back home. He now finds a home by way of Shu'aib alayhi salam, finds a mentor by way of Shu'aib alayhi salatu wasalam, his uh, father-in-law to be. And as a result, lives with the family for a number of years. Um, you could say that spiritually trains under Shu'aib alayhi salatu wasalam. And when the time comes and he heads back home, he's married to one of Shu'aib alayhi salatu wasalam's daughters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the way back grants him nabuwa and prophethood. From that single meeting or that show of kindness, how much good cascaded in the life of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam in a forlorn land, which the people, by the way, already showed their colors at the well, that they were not the the most uh, easygoing and the most hospitable of people. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him in the life of the best resident of that particular land, not only as a guest, but as a son-in-law and a, another man of the household, if we may use that description. An indication unto the reader of the Quran that your showing of kindness and the best of character and, and doing people a good turn will ultimately result result in not only a small expectant good coming your way, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ensure that that good be continuous and it be established and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. The 20th Jews con concludes with an example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. When it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم مثل الذين اتخذوا من دون الله أولياء that the example of those people who have taken from besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confidants and friends كمثل العنكبوت is like the example of the spider and what does the spider do? اتخذت بيتاً it, it, it now constructs a house. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ أَوْهَنَ الْبُيُوتِ That the, work, the, the, the weakest of houses, لَبَيْتُ الْعَنْكَبُوتِ is indeed the house of the spider, if only they knew. Now what is the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing to? Those that have taken from besides Allah, refer to the kuffar, the mushrikeen, they refer to those people who plot and plan against the believers, who plot and plan against the deen of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that their example is like the example of a spider that has constructed a house. In other words, a spider web. How does a spider web look? intricate. It looks full of design, complexities, the spider sitting in the middle and you know the, the web of that spider connecting here, networking there and whilst in our houses we may have small spider webs but if you go out into the forest, into the bushes, you are likely to see large uh, very complex type of spider webs and indeed they are a sight to behold on their, on their own. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says as complex as they look 
as far networking and reaching as they look. Ultimately, the description is the weakest of houses. These people's plans are the weakest. That when the time comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings it crashing down. Whether it is a system of banking, whether it is a military system, whether it is a social system, that today they may claim that we have got the best social system. Don't you see uh, liberties that we have extended unto their residents? They can be whatever they want to be. Today they can be male, tomorrow they can be female, the next day they can subscribe as non-binary. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that that seems to be a fanciful network that they have created. Ultimately, let a generation or two pass. The weakest of houses, Bayt al Ankabut, the house of the spider, it will come crashing down in front of their eyes because it's not built on anything firm. The only firm foundation that anyone could seek is the hukam, the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala via the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes a series of such examples which are included in the Quran. These are the lofty examples that we illustrate for the people. And the only those who have got those who are now people of knowledge, they are the only people who will comprehend the integrity and the essence of these examples. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the best of understanding. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. واكتب لنا أن ندخل الجنات بالريان